The sugar beet industry is vibrant in Colorado. Sugar beet growers in the Longmont Conservation District are always looking for ways to become more efficient as well as more productive. In the 2008 growing season, eight test plots participated in a field test using strip-till technology during planting. Or the way it's been done in the past is to plow in the fall. Uh, you normally have to disc first and then plow in the fall, and if you can get it mulched and leveled in the fall, then you feel like you're in pretty good shape uh, for the spring. You won't have to do a lot of extra work then in the spring, and that is kind of critical with sugar beets in that any work you do in the spring causes the ground to dry out and it also causes it to be too loose. Um, sugar beets like a real firm seed bed and uh, it, where the seed goes eventually needs to be pretty tight in order to keep the moisture there so it can sprout and, and come up in case you get some hot winds or something. Strip tilling is a land management practice that seeks to leave as much of the topsoil undisturbed as possible while leaving a fertile seed bed for a crop. We believe uh, with the use of a strip till machine that we can eliminate many of the passes that we traditionally have to take to prepare a field for planting. We are conducting an experiment here to see if it's possible to do strip tilling on furrow irrigation. By leaving the topsoil and the accompanying residue, moisture stays locked into the ground and the soil profile can be improved. Chemicals may also be applied to a precise spot in the seedbed for increased effectiveness. Strip-till land management has been used successfully in corn crops for nearly a decade in Colorado, but the technology is just now making its way into sugar beet crops. Test plots were planted in early April at one location in Larimer County, four in Weld County, and three in Boulder County. And of course, weather will always play a factor. Out of the eight test plots, three of the plots had beets freeze out, leaving five surviving test plots to last the entire growing season. By May 30th, the sugar beets are beginning to leaf out, and it's easy to distinguish the strip-till beets from the conventional till beets, if only for the crop residue between the rows. In some areas, the residue on the ground appears to have helped the ground from blowing. On August 18th, a field day was held to give local growers the opportunity to see the progress of the trials and give growers a chance to talk about the pros and cons of the strip-till trial. Also at the field day, seed statistics and side-by-side -side photos of the plots were presented. Here are a few of the comparisons. By harvest time, the side-by-side -side comparisons became very apparent. And at harvest time, the final numbers were put together. The average tillage costs were 78% less on the strip till. Overall production costs were 8% less. The average yield was 4% less on the strip till with a sugar content of 0.03% less. The net income was 10% more on the strip till. The sugar content was 1.6% less on the beets that were harvested on September 25th compared to October 20th. And there was no noticeable difference in the soil temperatures between the strip till and the conventional till. The soil moisture in these test plots was moderate at planting time due to the dry winter. And it's also notable that the slot did not close because of a lack of winter moisture. All moisture tests prior to irrigation were low with no difference between the strip till and the conventional till. All plots were irrigated two times along with some late season rains. Again, there were no noticeable differences in moisture tests or moisture retention. In talking to other strip till farmers not in the test plot, they saw a noticeable increase in moisture retention in the strip till the second year. The strip till and conventional till received the same fertilizer application of 165 pounds of nitrogen and 27 pounds phosphorus on average of the plots. There was one plot that did not get phosphorus. There were no compaction tests taken on any of the plots. It's a, it's a real commitment, but it does work. I mean, I, we started where it was the worst possible climatic conditions you could possibly have, but we felt like we saved moisture. 
but we just kept plugging along at it, and I think we're, we're getting better at it all the time. But I think my major concern was I'd never be able to irrigate. So we use a Hawkins ditcher system, and that's all, since we've got the Roundup beets, that's all we've done is, and with our corn, is we, we, uh, we ditch. And that's the only tillage program after it's planted. One of the more important factors discovered is the importance of good residue management. A GPS guidance system is very important along with the sizing of implements. Challenges were presented when a four-row strip-till machine was used with a 12-row planter. Results also showed the best seedbed was achieved at speeds of 5 to 6 miles per hour. The equipment companies recommended 25 to 30 horsepower per row on most strip-till machines depending on soil types. Producers need to be very much aware that you just can't go out, buy the machine, and expect to go out and strip till the next day. It's going to take some time to convert. It's going to take some time to learn how to handle all that high residue and how you're going to have to set that machine. It's kind of like having a combine. You don't just go out and run it through the field and expect it to harvest perfectly. Well, a strip till machine with its various adjustments, you're going to have to sit there and tweak it. If you're going to grow sugar beets under strip till, you have to be willing to think and start doing residue management from the day before you harvest all the way through the system. Because if you don't do that with that small seed, you don't get good seed to soil contact, you miss out on achieving a good stand. You know, looking at it, some of our numbers today, we've seen that we were harmed by that, by cultivation from the residue. So you've just got to plan on doing some intense residue management from the very beginning of your whole operation. Good information was gained from this strip-till trial. As producers move forward in their efforts to improve yield and decrease costs, it's important to remember that while the benefits have been proven, maximizing the benefits of strip-till land management can take several seasons.